Hi everybody, it's Kelly Russell, the Rock Your Joy Coach. Thank you so much for being here today. Welcome to my channel. So my topic for this week is what the hell is meant by the atonement principle in A Course in Miracles? You know, like people ask me about this and I know that I kind of struggled with it um, just because of what our normal understanding of the word atone means, you know, it's like atoning for something. So like, you know, paying for, for something or, you know, prostrating ourselves or in, in something like that. And it isn't like so much of the terminology used in A Course in Miracles, it of course has a completely different meaning, you know, like, like so many of those other words right that I mean the word God Jesus um, sin forgiveness crucifixion resurrection love prayer heaven hell reality all of those words that that we think we know what they mean mean something very different in the interpretation of a course in miracles and so the atonement is another one of those words. So in traditional Christianity, atonement has to do with Jesus dying on the cross to atone for the the world's sins. Okay, and in in a course of miracles, you know the the whole point of the atonement principle is to teach that. The world isn't real <laughs> that and that the separation from god never occurred and and this the sin if you will which is just considered error thinking the the error in our minds is believing that we separated from god in the first place that we are separate we ever could be separate that it, that anything ever happened there's so many places in a course in miracles where Jesus literally says, nothing has happened. Nothing has happened. It never happened. It's in your mind. It was a tiny mad idea. It was an illusion. You fell into a dream. And so, so the atonement principle, the full realization and recognition of the fact that the separation never occurred, how do we get to it? And what the way that the Course in Miracles teaches us, the vehicle it to get to the full realization to get to the the actual being part of the atonement is forgiveness it's the miracle the miracle is a shift in perception from fear to love right it is it is literally going from one state of mind steeped in the ego's fear believing that we are separate, believing that we are guilty, believing that something indeed, something big and huge and terrible has happened, that we have separated ourselves from God and, and believing then that we have to pay for that guilt, that we will ultimately be punished for it, that we have been rejected by God because we actually rejected him. All of that, you know, again, Jesus is telling us in A Course in Miracles, Nothing has happened. None of that ever went down. You're, you're having a nightmare. <laughs> you're believing it. And the way that we get to not believing it is by practicing the miracle over and over and over again. Practicing shifting our perception from fear to love. Because when we completely have done that to the point where we no longer perceive fear, we only will be able to see love, then we will, in fact, be in the atonement, we'll be through it, we will have that full realization that the separation never occurred, we will be then in the awareness of oneness, once again, we never left it, we're still hanging out there, it's out of, but it's out of our awareness, you know, we're not we're, we're, we have consciousness of this world instead. We, the, we think this is our reality, but this is just reality with a small r. Our true reality is the home that we never left with God. And so getting to that place of atonement is practicing the miracle, as I said, and 
how do we practice the miracle? The miracle is simply practicing forgiveness. That's what it is. I know, I know some people don't want to hear that. They, they want the miracle to be something else. Um, I've heard people say, you know, that, you know, forgiveness, it's not just all about forgiveness. A Course in Miracles is all about forgiveness. That is what it is about. It might as well be called A Course in Forgiveness. That's what the miracle is, you guys. So, so, so how do we do that and why? Well, okay, so first of all, in, in the miracle, um, the first 50 miracle principles in A Course in Miracles, principle number 25, miracles are part of an interlocking chain of forgiveness, which when completed is the atonement. And atonement works at, at all time and in all dimensions of time. And so what that means is that every time we practice forgiveness, we are undoing our own error thinking in the past and correcting all errors in the past in all dream past lifetimes and correcting it for the future because we're we're performing these miracles we're practicing forgiveness in the present and it works in both directions and in all dimensions of time as it said and so we are undoing the ego we are undoing any guilt that we think we have anything that we think we've ever done wrong you know any any guilt that we're carrying for any perception we have, any mistakes we have made, errors we've made, bad decisions, bad choices, whatever, whether they're in this dream lifetime or one that has happened in the past or one that is scheduled to occur in the future and hasn't happened yet, the miracle, the forgiveness practice works to undo our errors of thinking in all of those dimensions. And when we have done that sufficiently to the point that we don't see error anymore in another, so we don't see other people as doing wrong. This is the whole point about forgiveness is that when we are holding attack thoughts about our brothers, when we are believing that our brothers are doing something wrong, in this world, we, we perceive that as they are wrong. So, so they, those thoughts become attack thoughts because we are thinking that our brothers are something that they are not. We're perceiving them to be something they are not. Whether we're perceiving them, them to be a jerk or you know a victimizer, a perpetrator, somebody who hurt our feelings, who betrayed us, who, you know, whatever label we want to put on it in all the different ways that we do and all the judgments that we make about all the people that we make judgments about, whether they are, are in our sort of posse of the beloveds of our spouses and our kids and our parents and our BFFs and so forth, or whether they are, you know, somebody that we uh, you don't even know, but yet I have all kinds of judgment and uh, about and co condemnation for, you know, whether they are a politician or a celebrity or, you know, whatever. It really doesn't matter because we are all one. We are all one son of God. That is what the term the sonship in A Course in Miracles means. We are one son. We appear to be many because we believe that we separated from God. And in that belief, in that tiny mad idea moment, everything appeared to splinter into bazillions of separated parts, including us all winding up as these separate beings and in separate bodies with separate, you know, ideas and, and unique personalities and, and all of that. And the truth is that we are all one light. We are all one sun. We are all made of pure love. We are pure perfection. We're an extension of God. That is what the truth of us is. And so the atonement is just us waking up to that reality that's that's what the atonement is and so so that's why our function here as a course in miracles teaches us our function 
is forgiveness because in order for us to to wake up to that reality and to to receive that atonement and to have that be in our complete awareness and have this universe and time and space disappear and us be able to just be in in the awareness of that oneness that we never left we have to be able to we have to be able to get ourselves to that place and we're not doing that alone we're doing that under the guidance of spirit and we're being guided at every moment of every day and what the primary guidance is of a course in miracles so the central teaching is that there is no world and that is because we are making this up in our minds we're making this up as a a mass hallucination we are it's like we have hypnotized ourselves into believing that in this crazy reality you know that we're just hanging out in this dream and and that everything that's happening in this dream we think is real and so as we as we allow ourselves to not make it real as we practice forgiveness practicing forgiveness in the course of miracles teaching which it calls true forgiveness is a way of not making whatever it seems it to be happening in this world real so it can still look like it's happening but we're like you know what i'm just going to forgive this i'm going to forgive this for what i know it to be which is a projection that is coming from me I am projecting my own unconscious guilt over believing that I separated from my creator and that I am now separate from all my brothers, none of which ever happened and is not true. But I, as long as I'm believing that and I'm coming from that place, that guilt, that underlying guilt makes me feel so terrible and bad and awful and like I'm horrible that I constantly am having to project it. I'm projecting it out onto really anyone and everyone and, and all kinds of situations, whether it is onto another person every single time we see someone else as guilty or we're blaming them or we're, you know, we're holding them responsible for anything that has to do with anything you know as long as when we say that they're the reason why we're unhappy or they made us feel bad or you know they did that to us or they you know caused this or that all of those kinds of you know statements that kind of language is all those are all attack thoughts and they're all projections of our own guilt so that forgiveness process is so important it is the most important teaching in a course in miracles if you're a course in miracles student and you're not doing this forgiveness practice you're not gonna wake up you're just not and so um you know I'm, I'm sorry to say that but if you're a course in miracles student you're wasting your time if you're not practicing forgiveness and so my suggestion is either start practicing it and give yourself the gift of the benefits which happen immediately or find another spirituality because this one is going to be really frustrating to you if you're if you're not if you're not performing the miracles that's what the forgiveness is it's a course in miracles if you're not doing the miracles it's going to it's not it's going to feel empty to you and it and it's going to you're going to be bummed out so how do you do the forgiveness process the forgiveness process is simply, I forgive you, and the you can be whatever. The you is typically another person. If you if you back it up far enough to what you're upset or have a grievance about or what you're pissed off at or who you who, you know what is doing you wrong, if even if it feels like it's something that is more intangible or you know kind of you know doesn't really have form. If you think about it long and hard enough and you think, who am I really blaming for this? Probably there's going to be a person that's going to arise in your mind uh, as opposed to, you know, kind of an institution or whatever. But everything that you could be holding in grievance, anything is fodder, is appropriate to be forgiven because we're not really forgiving that person or that thing that we are holding responsible for unhappiness that's just that's just what it looks like 
What we're really forgiving is ourselves for believing in the dream in the first place, for believing in and investing in and making the illusion real. That's really what the forgiveness is. But it feels really abstract to do that. And it, there, it, when we forgive ourselves before we put a face onto it, it can feel very, it can, it can bring up uh, argument in our mind, in our ego mind, and, and b sort of stop us before we even get very far. You know, if we just start with, I'm forgiving myself, the ego is going to come in there and be like, forgiving yourself for what? You need, you don't need to forgive yourself. You didn't do anything. It's everybody else's fault. So you might as well just start with the everybody else's whose fault you're perceiving it is. And then the, the second piece of that is forgiving yourself. So you start with, I'm forgiving you. Again, the you is whatever the you is, person, place, thing, whatever. And because there's nothing to forgive, and why is there nothing to forgive? Because I remember that I am dreaming an illusion that the ego mind made up. And I remember that the guilt and fear is in me and I am projecting it onto you. And I forgive myself for dreaming this illusion. And I ask spirit to change my mind and heal my thoughts and perceptions. And I, I ask to see this differently and I release it to be healed. That is literally what the forgiveness process is. And I'm just languaging it that way because it's easy for me to remember. And you, you, you know, use that if that's helpful or if you need to, you know, switch around a few words. But that's the essential meaning of it. And so you don't want to change it too much because you want to make sure that the, the, the actual meaning, the intended meaning as The Course in Miracles teaches it is there, which is that I'm forgiving this or that or whatever it is for what they didn't do. You know, that's one of the teachings in A Course in Miracles is that you are forgiving your brother for what he didn't do. Because if, think about it, if we're in a dream, if we're in, that is what the Course is teaching us, is that we fell into a dream when we believed we separated from our Creator, we believed we separated from God, we fell into a dream, and we are in the process of waking up, but in the, that is the process of waking up, is the atonement. It is the process of recognizing that what we think our brothers did never happened because this whole dream never happened. It's a dream. Dreams aren't real. And so as we recognize that we are in a dream, we are in the process of waking up and part of that process of waking up. And it's, it is a necessary part of the awakening process to recognize the innocence of our brothers because it's the only way we can see our own innocence. We can only see our innocence as we forgive our brothers and we see their innocence. As we witness to, the, to, to their innocence, we witness to our own. And there's no way that we can see ourselves as innocent while we are holding our brothers in guilt or condemnation. It doesn't work like that because we're all joined. We're all one. So you can't hold part of the light in condemnation. You know, you can't, you can't hold a ray or two of light and see the, see the rest of the light is light. And, and a couple of these, these rays here are actually darkness. It doesn't work like that. So, you know, the, all facets of the diamond are, are reflective of the light, all rays of the light are part of the light and all beings are part of the sonship, part of God, of the extension of God. They're all our brothers. We're all one. And so as we recognize that, we recognize their innocence, we recognize our own innocence, then we wake up to the truth of who we are, which is pure love. We see love everywhere. We, we train ourselves right out of seeing fear and darkness. We do see love and light. And as we do that, then the atonement is completed. And then we are at one again in oneness with all of our brothers, with God, where we never left. And I just want to say th something about at one. There, There is a, a perception out there that I've heard people changing the word atonement to at one meant. No. 
if Jesus in the Course of Miracles wanted us to call it at one minute, he would have called it at one minute. It's not at one minute. I don't even know what at one minute means. W oneness is oneness, and that is the truth of us. But us, the process of us atoning for our erroneous thinking is the forgiveness process. And that's how you, that's how you get to it. That's how you wake up. That's what the miracle is. And we are asked to be miracle workers. That's, that's what Jesus is asking us to do here is he's asking us to, to be miracle workers, to work the miracles that he's giving us. He says, I'll provide you with the miracles, which is essentially when we notice that our peace is disturbed and that we're having judgment about someone or something. And ours is to perform that miracle, the shift in perception from fear to love, the forgiveness, the true forgiveness process, and continue to, to wake ourselves up more and more and more to let more and more and more of that light in until we're completely, completely wide awake and seeing love everywhere, seeing no fear, seeing no darkness. And at that point, we're back in heaven where we never left, but that's where the awareness is. So I hope that is clear. Um, I hope that if you um, if you resonate with this video, if, if that was helpful to you, please share it. Um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, I hope that you will consider doing so. I'm here uh, usually every week talking about the practical application of A Course in Miracles. And I just love meeting with you like this. Um, so highlight of my week. And I also just want to make sure that I mention that tis the season right now for holiday joy rocking. So if you are someone who has considered doing private coaching with me in the past, maybe you've done a discovery call with me and wanted to work with me and the time just wasn't right. Or if you have perhaps worked with me and have wanted to do so again, right now might be a really great time for you to think about that because I, I have holiday offerings happening and it, they include discounts on the programs that I offer throughout the year, coaching programs, as well as a couple of spiritual counseling packages that I don't normally offer. And so if this has been something that you thought you might want to engage in, having a companion to assist you in this journey of applying the philosophy and the spiritual psychology of A Course in Miracles to your life and having the, the resulting experience of miraculous relationships with everyone and everything and really just having a, a, a shift in your perception to the point of transformation, I encourage you to check into it. There's a link below. It'll take you to all the information that you need to know. And if you have any questions, just go ahead and send me an email. So thank you again for joining me today. And I'll see you next week. I love you.